Why on earth would you waste all of your money on lithium batteries, inverters, DC to DC chargers, solar regulators, when you can just buy this? So this video is probably gonna piss a few people off, but who cares because there's a new player in town and it's going to disrupt the whole 12 volt industry. This is the iTech Weld PS2000. Full disclaimer guys, we are affiliated with iTech Weld. We do have a discount code with them. SKT will get you 5% off store wide even on sales. Everyone knows about that. Also, we were gifted the PS2000 power station from iTech Weld to silently test over the last six months so we can provide our honest opinion on it. And the reason we can do that is because no one is paying us to make this video. We call spade spades, and to be honest, products, we call shit products and they don't even make it to air. Also, I am a qualified electrician. YouTube is a scary, dangerous place where anyone can pick up a camera and make a video like this. Just be careful who you listen to for advice and make sure you do your own research on products before you purchase them. Oh, this thing's heavy. Simple, portable, easy, affordable, zero install costs are a few of the good things to describe this unit. But this is an honest review, so let's talk about a few of the things about this unit that's pretty shit. But first thing, straight off the bat, this thing is bloody heavy. It weighs 22 kilos, and it looks like a house brick on steroids. I'm actually shaking holding this thing up. It doesn't even work as a Toyota handbrake. PS2000 also takes up a lot of space. With all that being said, can you really trust this unit as far as you can throw it? All right, there's some of the cons. Here's some pros, and as I say the pros, I'm sure your brains are gonna tick over and you'll realize why I think this is gonna disrupt the industry and why maybe buying a full 12 volt system might be a thing of the past. All right, the pros in a nutshell, these are the features. So it's a 160 amp hour lithium battery which is equivalent to about 1,997 watts. It's got a 2,000 watt pure sine wave inverter with a peak wattage of 4,000 watts. That's inbuilt. It's also got an inbuilt MPPT solar regulator. This unit, when you plug it into 240, charges to up to 80%. We found it's around 78 to 80% within an hour, which is just staggering. When you plug it into a solar panel, if you've got 500 watts of solar, this thing will be fully charged in under four hours. Another cool thing about this is it's got all these inputs for your DC outputs, so USB-C, USBs, um, all sorts of good stuff. And it also has three 240 volt outlets. These are hooked up to that 2000 watt inverter, which means you can run most of your household appliances off this unit, which is super sick as well. This unit also doubles as a UPS, so an uninterrupted power supply. And because it has an AC pass-through charger, you can also charge and discharge this simultaneously. So you could have input coming in from your solar panel and you could be discharging at the same time where in the past that hasn't been a thing. The last thing I'll talk about is the LCD screen. So this tells you all the information you want to know. Anyone can read how much discharge capacity this thing still has left. It's shown in a percentage which is super easy and uh, yeah I think showing the state of charge like that is super simple and iTech World have nailed it with the LCD screen. As you can see works real good as a seed as well. That's another little hidden bonus. Before we get into the video, we do have a very special offer on the PS2000. And if you are interested in buying a PS2000, wait till the end. We have a super special offer just for our viewers only. All right, some of the things that is really impressive about this unit is that simultaneous charge discharge. So you can be charging whatever you want off this device. Like a phone's pretty, it's too easy for 160 amp hour, but you get the idea. Plus you can plug in your solar blanket. So it's charging it while you're discharging it. So. That in itself is wicked. We've got our 300 watt panel here from iTech World. We get around 17 amps every hour from this thing. Um, and you just plug it straight into the side of the unit because it's got an inbuilt regulator. You don't need to have any regulator between the panel and the unit itself. But uh, let's plug some things in that are a little bit bigger than just an iPhone. We plugged in the induction cooker now. We've got the blanket still plugged in and let's ramp this bloody thing up. This is a 2000 watt induction cooker. All right, as you can see here, we're having a bloody cook up in the desert and uh, we've got the induction cooker going flat tack. 2000 watts we're pulling right now. Authorised by the NT government. We've got the phone still charging as well. Uh, we've got the blanket plugged in. Like you can see, this thing is freaking sick. It can do anything. This is a massive load. This is a massive load. So 
This would be pulling around 130, I reckon 130-ish amps right now off this, give or take. And uh, it's absolutely handling it like a breeze. And uh, you could max this thing out. This thing's got every protection under the sun. We're talking low voltage cutouts, high voltage bloody cutouts. We got all sorts of stuff inbuilt to this. So literally it can't go wrong. I want some Starlink, I want some internet as well. Let's plug that in while we're cooking up our pasta. <laughs> what else can we plug in? <laughs> Are you right? I'm trying to film a bloody 12 volt video and you're cutting your toenails. <laughs> I'm making use of my time while I wait. Go on, don't let us stop you. <laughs> so the bo the, wa the boiled is water. The water is boiled and uh, she's boiling hot. It's hot as sin. Don't tip it out, we need that for lunch. Look at that. Anyway, can't waste water when you're in the desert. But um, yeah, at the peak of its pull it, uh, peak of its current there, we could have done that for another 52 minutes it reckons. So we were pulling upwards of 130 amps, 140 amps, and still for a 2,000 watt inverter, it's um it's close to capacity. But like I said, it's got a peak of 4,000. Have it going further than 2,000 for a limited time. It's not maintainable or sustainable having 4,000 watts coming off it, but it can do it for a moment or two. All right, this seems to be a bit too easy for this unit. Let's plug it into our caravan and see if we can run the aircon off the PS2000. All right, so even after all that commotion, we've still got We've still got 95% showing up on the uh, the screen here. And now I'll talk you through the screen and how to read it and what it looks like in a second. And also we'll talk about the situations where you might want this unit. Plus I'm gonna share with you a secret unlimited power hack. Now this is like infinite power. Um, I'm gonna share it with you and how this unit can give you infinite power. Now it's probably sounding a bit trippy, but we'll plug it into the van. We'll get the aircon cranking and uh, then we'll start to talk about how to read the screen. So let's do that. Sorry, I'm almost tripping Sarah over there. Starlink. All right, plug that into the van. Heard a little beep in the van, that means she's powered up. And let's get the aircon cranking, because it is hot. When I plug that lead in, not only is it gonna run the appliances in the van, but it also charges our batteries up. Now we got 600 amp hours, and that's connected to a 35 amp hour 240 volt charger. So we're going to be pulling 35 amps off it to charge the batteries. That's what the charger is going to do. Plus we're going to run the aircon, fans, laptop chargers, all sorts of jazz. So let's turn the aircon on. We'll bust her down to about 18, get her nice and chilly. And uh, let's see how long this lasts. Oh, I've got to shut the windows too, I guess. And uh, let's go outside and we'll read the screen and see what we're actually pulling here. Radio guys, we've got it all running now. It's coming down to temp. Now this will ramp up over the next 10 minutes as the, the compressor kicks in on the aircon. But currently we're pulling 1269 watts, which will get higher anyway. And that's Starlink, the 35 amp hour charger. Um, so we're charging the batteries now, running the aircon, all that jazz. All right, as you can see here, we've got it all plugged in. We've got 73 minutes remaining. If we keep discharging it at the rate it's going, state of charge is saying 91% are charged still. That'll also drop while we're discharging it. We've got input and output. Now this is in watts. So as you can see, we've disconnected the solar panel. So we're getting zero watts coming in. Our outgoings, our output is at two, well, around 1260 watts, right? So it's a 2000 watt inverter. So we still got plenty of meat in the game there. We could still go a lot harder with the um, discharging um, with this unit. However, your time remaining will drop obviously, but we've just run the induction and stuff off it for about 10, 15 minutes. Um, so it's pretty good considering. That's all the information you wanna know. Input, output, time remaining, and state of charge. They've just made it real simple and easy. Um, all the buttons are very straightforward. Yeah, we're trying to find, I'm trying to find a, a serious con. Radio, I found a negative. Now, while I was trying to film the screen and show you guys the, the data on the screen, what it actually tells you, I was really struggling to see it and to actually get it on camera. So I reckon one thing they could improve is the backlighting in the back of the screen. So it's a little bit brighter. So in a sunny day like this, you can clearly see, you don't have to sort of block the screen to actually see what's going on. It's just a bit dull and uh, it's very hard to see when it's sunny like this. Well, now let's talk a bit about the application of this unit. At the moment, we've got a 2000 watt inverter in the car running off a 240 amp hour lithium battery. Now, the unlimited power hack is the one I was about to tell you about. With the car, the alternator charges our battery through the DC to DC in our car. Now, sometimes we crank the inverter up on the car, which is a 2000 watt, same as this, and we plug the lead into the van. Now. 
the car battery then charges the van batteries. Once we um, charge the, the van batteries up fully, then we go for a drive in the car, it recharges the car batteries and I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this, it's unlimited. As long as we're driving that day, we can even if we park the van under a tree or it's rainy for like two weeks, we're never gonna run out of battery because all we have to do is go for a little drive in the car, charges it up and then we dump that charge straight into the van battery and the cycle repeats. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is because this can be used in a similar way. Now, a lot of people carry generators around Australia with them. This can be used as a generator the fuel being the sun, um, and it's fully electric. So it weighs 23 kilos, like I said before. A generator probably weighs around that as well if you get a little yummy or something. But this can be used as an electric generator as a backup for your caravan, your car, anything you want. So that in itself is pretty cool. This is a backup. There's 160 amp hours of lithium battery capabilities in this that you can pump into the van at any given time that you want if you need it. So this is good insurance to have. You could take this out on your boat with you. You can take this just touring in your 4x4. There's so many applications for this. And like I said, it's so hard to find a con at the moment because I can see this being suitable for so, so many people out there. If you have a little high ace van or a little juicy van or whatever, and you don't want to do the whole DC to DC charger thing, blah, blah, blah. You could easy run one of these around Australia. Um, especially if you're going to be around civilization every couple of days, you don't even need a solar blanket. You could just plug this in for two hours and it's fully charged. So, that's one thing to consider too, guys. Um, it, it is a, it's a sick unit, and like I said, I'm trying to find cons. Just pause, Keelan, right there, because one thing that I've got to mention that is very, very crucial is that this PS2000 unit will save you a lot of money on install costs, right? So normal 12 volt systems, whether it's caravan, boat, car, 4x4, whatever 12 volt system you have, normally it's either going to cost you your time and money to install it with running cables fusing all that jazz you got to know that know-how as well or it's going to cost a professional his time and you're actually going to have to pay him to install it for you so this unit itself saves you all the hassle of install costs saves your money saves your time um, you just drop this in the back of your car take it away on your weekend um, there's no setting up or anything like that it's all ready to go so that is one thing i didn't say and i forgot to say and that's a very crucial point and a massive positive for this unit now a negative that i have missed as well uh, I did miss a negative in this is that I wish this charger charged a little bit faster off a cigarette output in a car now. It does charge. If you just plug this unit straight into your, your cigarette outlet in your car, it does charge at around 160 watts, right? That is still uh, charging faster than your fridge or something would be pulling off it at the same time. Different applications will obviously apply to different people, but... 160 watts um, is still a little bit, but I wish that was up around the, you know, the 30 amps every hour. Um, that would be ideal. Uh, maybe that's something that they can do a little bit better in the future, but still, if you plug this unit into your car cigarette output, it's still gonna charge itself over a period of time, which is, is, a, is a good point as well. I'm really glad they did that. I just wish it was a little bit faster. If you're waiting for the right time to upgrade your 12 volt setup, now is the time to do it. iTech World are having a massive Black Friday month sale up to 85% off and with our discount code SKT, that'll get you another 5% off. So up to 90% off store wide. That's lithium batteries, solar blankets, solar panels, power stations, DC and DC chargers, you name it, now is the time to buy. It won't be cheaper, don't miss out, it's while stocks last, back to the video. And I'm sure I'm only scratching the surface for applications for this thing. It's a UPS, so you can hook it up to things that you don't want to turn off if there's ever an outage or anything. This thing will kick in, there's UPS mode on it. Not too sure about how to get into that, but it's got um, outlets here. You've got a 12, 10 amp outlet. You've got a 12 volt, 25 amp outlet. Um, you've got various plug-in points, USB-C, USBs, three AC outputs, so just your 240 volt plug, and then you've got your charging on this side. You've got an overload protection on the side, nice and safe. Like I said, every overload uh, protection under the sun, this thing. Let's see how long the aircon lasts. Currently, while we're talking, it's gone to 84 minutes, so I'm guessing the, 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 um, the aircon was cycling before. Now the fan is only, so we've got 84 minutes remaining. So. That'll cool the van down nicely. Um, yeah, what a sick unit. We're really impressed with this thing. So let's talk a bit about that con, the major con that I spoke about before, the weight, right? So, so if you were to buy this unit, um, you could already have a 12 volt system, but let's assume you didn't have a 12 volt system. 
this would be replacing that. Now, I've done a bit of an estimate on the system that we have in the back of the car. That's a 240 amp hour lithium battery, same 2000 watt inverter, DC to DC charger, blah, blah, blah. Pretty much all the stuff that this would replace. Now, I reckon that weighs around 32 kilograms all up. The whole system, that's including cabling, all the little nooks and things, um, about 32 kilos, I reckon. So this weighs 22 point something. So really, it's not that heavy. For what it is, it's not that heavy. Um, and it weighs 22 kilos and you've seen it, it's powering the aircon and stuff. So really, is that a con? All right, now the price of this system. So the system in the back of the car, I estimate with cabling and all that stuff would have cost us over $4,000. This unit here um, is 2,000. Radio right, guys, special offer for the PS2000. So if right now is the cheapest time to buy. iTech World are having an up to 85% off store-wide sale and with our discount code, SKT, you'll get an extra 5%. So on the PS2000, instead of it being 3,000 something dollars, it's down to $2,564 with our discount code SKT. But it's only while stocks last. These things are gonna sell out super quick and uh, it's only for a limited time. So make sure you get in quick on that one, guys. SKT for that massive discount on the PS2000. Really, affordability, it's there. Um, if this is replacing that system that's worth four and a bit, um, two, two and a bit's probably not too bad for a system like this. Um, I think it's a good system. It comes with a 24 month full replacement warranty and I think this should be an option for everyone. Everyone should seriously look at one of these. You take it out of the car, you put it in the boat. It's, it's simple as that. All right, now I wanna use the camper trailer. Take it out of the boat, put it in the camper trailer. It's the jack of all trades. It's gonna go seamlessly into all your setup and, and rather paying for three systems in your car, your caravan and your boat, you could literally just pay for one. So anyway, guys, that is our view on the PS2000 from iTech World. We really like it. Like I said, any of the iTech stuff, SKT for a 5% off discount, even on uh, sale prices. And uh, it's gonna save you a fair bit of money on something that's worth $2,000. All right, so the last thing we've sort of need to talk about is whether we think that this is gonna be better than having a 12 volt system. And I think a lot of the um, conventional and practical reasons are there. Um, I think this outweighs that system in that car. Uh, do I think it's gonna fully outweigh that in the future and no one's gonna be buying these sorts of systems that we've got normally in cars and caravans and boats and stuff? I honestly think there's still a place, a time and place for that setup and I also think there's a time and place for this. However, if I was simply doing the weekend trip, um, even a school holidays trip, where I didn't wanna spend five grand to, to have the capabilities of this, I would 100% be buying this over that any day of the week. Um, our next setup that we're gonna be building, which we have bought a new vehicle, we've spoken about that before, we're not gonna give that one away yet. We'll be seriously looking at this option in compared to that option right there. Seriously, seriously looking at this option. So there you have it guys, that's our opinion on it. Um, we've, we've spoken, spoken, we've spoken about the pros, we've spoken about the cons. It's very hard to find a con in this. Can you find a con in this? Let us know in the comments below. I wanna hear what you guys reckon of this. We got one hour and 11 minutes off it. And that's after we sat in the in the dust out there, boiling some water and mucking around. So we only really started at 90%. So that's pretty impressive. Thanks for watching, legends. Make sure you click and watch this video right here.